Well, this is day eight. It's probably loud. Um, from dropping from four milligrams to three and a half milligrams eight days ago. And I am doing a lot better t today. Uh, I look like hell because I can't shave when I'm sick. But <clears throat> I hope if you're coming off this stuff that you're doing a taper because unfortunately I don't know what I would be able to tell you to do if you were already off this stuff stuff meaning benzodiazepines poison and I'll even say it, antidepressants and the thing is I've said it before, but you probably, some of you might be on that stuff, <clears throat> like antidepressants, and like that's, that's between you and yourself, but the thing I'm trying to say is, don't take that shit if it's because the doctor told you to, or if you really need it, then take it. It worked for me. But like I said, I had been on that for two years and that wasn't the plan. Now, would I do it all over again? That's a good question because I thought the Effexor was going to help me with my Valium. So, the doctor suggested that I stay on it. And the Ashton Manual, <clears throat> if you haven't read it already, and you're going through benzo withdrawals, or you're thinking about coming off benzos, look up the, ben the Ashton Manual. It's a scientific journal that was published in the late 70s by Heather Ashton, and she basically proves that benzos need to be on a slow taper. The black box warning from the FDA did not come out until 2020 that says anybody on this must be slowly tapered off. It's very small though, and a lot of doctors don't know that shit. But hopefully I can help spread that <clears throat> message. Or if you're going into your doctor and you're saying, I want to get off this benzo, and they're saying, okay, cool, you're just going to cut it in half this week, you're going to cut it in half that week, then that's when you have to reach out to me. Because I had to sell my doctor a slow taper. You know, when I came in there and I asked him the first time, he told me to do quarter, quarter, quarter. I tried that for like a week maybe two <clears throat> and it did not go well and that's when I called back and I you know was like this isn't working and you know he um, he's been doing it for a long time 30 years so in his mind well that's just the way it is fortunately with the internet you know it's kind of a blessing and a curse because there's a lot more hate in the world because of the internet. We get access to news a lot faster. We can side, we can join teams all virtually and, and argue against people. That's the bad side. The good side is, is we can research on our own and find out what's gonna work best for us. Because what I'm going through doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. And I learned that by watching other people's videos. You know, so that's where the internet can be great. <clears throat> and 
I got a bunch of articles and I printed the Ashton manual. I highlighted special sections in there and I told him, I went in, I made an appointment after he told me that it is what it is. And I basically begged him to please just read this. And I think he could tell, like, he, he could see the look in my eye that I wasn't fucking playing. And then the next day, he uh, came to me, called me, and he told me, I think you're going to need more time. <laughs> Man, what a relief. <clears throat> and he's been with me now for, you know, a long time. He's also the one that kept prescribing my Valium. So, what's that all about? When I first moved to Michigan, he uh, looked at my chart and he said, Oh, that's a lot of Valium. I, only, I was only on 15 milligrams. We need to get you off of that. And I said, Okay. But I was scared because I didn't have any tools. I didn't know that you could actually get off Valium. I was told by the doctors that... I had this mental illness and that was something I'm going to live with for the rest of my life. But I worked a program, uh, a recovery, and I noticed when I was working the steps in there, I started to feel better. And that's what made me realize, is this something I can fix? Come to find out, hell yeah. We can fix this. Those are just temporary solutions to a, you know, I don't want to say long-term problem because it depends on how long you want to take before you address those problems. But again, if you want to be on them, I'm okay with that. I just don't want people to trust their doctors or their psychiatrists that's saying, you need to take this with no plan. Uh, but I got to make a bunch of videos, you know, about kind of what's going on, how I've coped, because there's just so much information that I've compiled and I got to get out there. Uh, so I will be doing that. But, I mean, today was probably just a really good meeting with my boss. And I just feel the f I've been off Prozac since January uh, 5th or 10th, so I'm still coming off that technically. And when I cry, it's like, it's, it, it's not even a feeling. It's just, I just start crying from all of the emotions that I haven't been able to release. Uh, so it was very nice. But, you know, if you're going through this, or if you want to, message me. I can share what worked for me. I got amazing love and support by finally telling my family and friends that I just can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't act like I'm okay, you know. Um, so the symptoms I have today are, <clears throat> I'm still numb. Um, I'm weak. You know. Um, but the thing is, that doesn't really go away. So in between, I, in between of my drops, I usually get a week of good times, and, and those are the weeks that we have to soak up. Because what happens is, the, what I'm doing right now is I'm building, I'm building up my strength mentally. Physically, my fucking strength's gone. I can't BMX, I haven't for over a year. You know, uh, I work out every freaking day, and it's still hard to walk upstairs. On some days. But what I'm doing is I'm getting ready and I'm preparing myself so when I go into the next drop, which will probably be in a week, and if it doesn't feel right, then you know what? I just hold I hold it longer. There's people, technically I could probably drop today, but why? I don't want to do that. And the brain needs time to heal. <clears throat> so, just, it's patient patient-led um, taper, not a doctor, unless they know, which is very rare. Uh, but we can educate them if we approach them the right way. Um, I'm not saying my doctor's bad. 
they just don't know. That's why I don't have resentments against them, you know, because they don't fucking know. So that's why we got to share and t tell our stories. And if you're going through benzo withdrawals, and I know it's really hard to pick up the phone and, and document, but just try to start documenting because the more, the more of these videos get out there, the more we can help expose the truth. Um, I do feel great. I just haven't eaten yet, and I'm really high anxiety right now, uh, which is normal. My mornings are amazing, and then the afternoons, it just kind of, you know, but I can cope with it. I don't need no fucking pill. Sometimes it'd be nice, don't get me wrong, but not today or ever. So... Hang in there. And then to my friends and family, you know, I love you all. It's been very helpful to know that I'm not alone, even though they can't help me. At least I'm not suffering in silence anymore, and that's been huge. I'm pretty lucky. Um, so, God, I don't want to keep going, man, but... I just, I love you all, and I probably won't be filming until my next drop, you know, because I just wanted to show what it's like, and then what it, it does get better. It does get better, and that's why I keep fighting. That's why I keep trying, because I know this 16-month 16, 16 life sentence doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. When I decided to go off Valium... I, I checked into prison. And in a couple months, I'll be released. And I'll be able to heal. I'll still be sick, but God willing, you know, that's the point of tapering. So, God bless you. Hang in there. And uh, you can do this. The mind is very powerful.